Hi, my name is Mohamed Tahir and I'm an aerospace engineering graduate working at the UK's busiest airport, Heathrow Airport, as part of their engineering team. In this little video, I'm going to be taking you through what I do day in, day out as an engineer at Heathrow Airport. I'm going to be teaching you a little bit more about the airport. And last but not least, I'm going to be telling you how I got here. So that if anything interests you in what I do, you'll know what the steps you need to follow so that you can also get a job just like mine in the future. Now, many of you may be familiar with Heathrow Airport. You may have used it to travel, to go visit family or gone on holiday. You know the drill. You arrive, you have your bags, you check them in, you go through security, you get to the other side, maybe do a bit of cheeky duty free shopping on the way, arrive to your gate, get on the plane, you hear the engines whirl up, and off you go to your brand new destination. But what does it take to get someone like you through the airport in the most efficient and effective way possible? That is where I come in. As an engineer, my job is to make sure that every single part of your journey goes perfectly to plan. Now, it's not just the planes that are the bit of engineering within an airport. Everything else in the airport also needs engineering teams to look after it. You may be asking, what is it? What is it other than the plane that needs an engineering team to look after? Well, think about it. When you go and give them people your bags in the baggage system, well, we need to make sure that the baggage system is working. The baggage system is made up of thousands of robots and automated machinery that can take your bag from one place when you check it in all the way onto the plane. That requires engineers. When you go through security, the x-ray machines need to make sure they're always working. That needs engineers. When you wanna go fill up your water bottle, we need to make sure that the water is there and available, ready for you to drink. That also requires engineers. When you get to your gate and you see the plane, well, that plane isn't using its own electricity. Heathrow Airport is actually providing it with electricity. That also requires engineers. When you actually get onto the runway and you're about to take off, there are thousands of lights in the ground. Every single one of those lights requires an engineering team to look after them to make sure they're working. There are thousands of different little pieces of the airport that require engineering brains to look after so that your journey can go as smoothly as possible. It's not just the planes. My current role is an engineering graduate. What an engineering graduate is, it's a two year program where I get to go from one department to another and see how all these little pieces of the puzzle add up. I spent six months working in the terminals, looking after the terminal buildings. And you know that long square pipe that connects you onto the aircraft? Well, I was looking at how we actually look after those and how we maintain them to make sure that you have the most smooth journey. Another six months was spent in the baggage system, looking at how we can make the baggage system as efficient and effective as possible. While I was there, I was designing different pieces of kit that actually influences your bag to make sure that more bags can make it onto planes. I spent another six months looking after our runway lights, asking the questions of, well, when a pilot comes in to land and his big bulky tires or her big bulky tires smash into the ground, they leave behind some rubber. What if that rubber actually covers the light? Can the pilot still see it? If so, how do we clean the lights? How do we make sure the lights are always clean? Asking these sort of questions to make sure that the pilots can always see the lights, whether it's foggy, whether it's rainy, to make sure that when you're sat on the plane coming into Heathrow Airport, the pilot has a perfect view of the runway and can always land safely. On the engineering graduate program, I've spent two years going from one department to another, learning about different things and solving problems while I'm there. That is the essence of engineering. Engineering is about applying your understanding of different situations to be able to solve problems. You may be asking yourself, what does the average week look like at Heathrow Airport on the graduate program? Well, the answer is, there is no average week. Every single day at Heathrow Airport is different. There are some days where I'm up in the control tower, looking at the operation, trying to understand the operation. Meanwhile, a week later, I could be literally on a night shift, on the runway, scrubbing runway lights, trying to make sure, understand, you know, why is there so much rubber on particular areas where there isn't on others. A week later on the graduate program, I could have changed placement and now I'm in the baggage system, looking after all the different equipment that we have in the baggage system, making sure that it's as efficient 
and effective as possible. While working at Heathrow Airport, there's such a broad range of things that I could be working on. It means that there is no average day. Every day could be doing something different and I could be in a completely different part of the airport. And that is what I love about working at Heathrow Airport. Now, of course, there are some days where I'm just sat behind a laptop, typing away, writing reports, sending emails. That's unavoidable, especially when you're leading projects and you need to collaborate with a lot of people. You usually find yourself talking to many people, setting up meetings and actually discussing some really interesting stuff with some really interesting people who have years and years of experience. Meanwhile, there are other days where you can get your hands dirty and actually pick up the tools and really get into the nitty gritties and understand the mechanics of how things work at the airport, not just by seeing, but actually by doing. Now, to be able to do my job effectively, there are a few key skills that are really, really important to master. And the most important skill by far while being an engineer is to be able to problem solve. That is what engineering is all about. Engineering is about understanding something to the point where you can solve problems within it. Whether you're looking at the runway, whether you're looking at the baggage system, whether you're looking at the water systems, whether you're looking at the electricity systems, no matter what system you're looking at, being able to understand it to the point you can solve problems within it is what engineering is all about. But even once you've solved that problem, you need to work with the people around you to make sure you can implement that solution. That is when the second most important skill comes in, and that is communication. Being able to communicate your ideas to the people that you work with is such a vital skill. And some people may even think it's more important than problem solving, because what's the point of solving a problem in your head if you can't communicate it to the people around you? It's basically worthless. So communication is definitely up there in some of the most important skills that you require as an engineer and actually in any field of work that you work in communication is vital and being able to articulate yourself to the people that you're around is so 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 important some of the other really important things to be able to do as an engineer is actually to be able to understand concepts especially on the graduate program you know i usually spend my time talking to subject matter experts about things that I have very little knowledge about. So one of my key skills is being able to ask open questions to really get them to open up and to share that knowledge with me. And once they share that knowledge with me, it's my job to really wrap my head around it as quickly and as efficiently as possible so that I can gain that understanding so I then can try and solve the problem. It's like a little loop. You ask a question which requires communication skills, you need to be a fast learner to be able to grasp that information and then that information leads into the problem solving and then once you've got the solution and once you've solved the problem, you need to communicate it again. It's literally like a loop. Communication, understanding, problem solving, communication and it just goes round and round and round. Some of my favourite parts of work, like I mentioned, is the fact that every single day is different but also the fact that I can go and see so many different behind the scenes of the airport. Never in a million years did I imagine myself being able to walk underneath a plane. I still remember the moment I touched an A380 for the first time. It was just magical. Being able to really be in the midst of the operation, which is always so busy. There's always something going on at Heathrow Airport. That is one of my favourite things while working at the airport. Growing up in West London, Heathrow Airport was always my local airport. And it's where I used to spend hours and hours before a flight, looking out of the window, looking at the planes, thinking, wow, planes are really, really cool. And I fell in love with planes and the world of aviation. But not only did I love that while I was in school, I really enjoyed maths and physics. I enjoyed physics because I felt like it was teaching me how the world works around me. And I enjoyed maths because it was just a place where I could solve problems. I felt like I could sort of get my hands on an equation and just really try and figure out what was going on here. So at A-levels, I studied four subjects. I did maths, further maths, physics, and chemistry. Now I had to decide what I wanted to do for my future. I really, really started to become fond of the aviation world. I really started to like planes growing up you know I'd find myself making paper aeroplanes I would find myself always looking at planes while they're flying overhead I was just really a nerd when it came to planes and I really really enjoyed it and that is when I decided 
to study aerospace engineering. I absolutely loved my aerospace engineering degree because that's when I was really able to understand the maths and the physics behind planes. I now am able to look at a plane and really understand what it takes for it to be able to fly. And that for me is an amazing feeling. During my degree, I got the opportunity to work at Lufthansa, which is a German airline, to be able to maintain aircrafts. So I worked in a facility just outside of Heathrow Airport where we would rip apart landing gears for aircraft. Landing gears are those big metal bulky things, basically the legs of the aeroplane. And what we'd do in this facility is we'd rip, up, rip it apart completely into individual nuts, screws and bolts, check it, measure it, make sure everything is good as gold, and then put it all back together again. I did that during my degree. So there's something called a placement year, where what you do is you go do two years of university, and then for the third year, you go out, you work, and then you come back and you finish off your degree. Now was when I had to ask myself, what do I wanna do once I've graduated? And I had to do a bit of reflection about where I wanted to work. It's really important to understand where you want to work and you base that decision based upon what is important to you. One thing that was really important to me was that I wanted to be able to work on technical engineering, but more importantly, I wanted to be able to apply it towards a customer focused environment. What do I mean by that? Well, while I was working and while I was at university, I actually worked at Ikea part-time. I was selling sofas and every weekend I'd be there selling sofas for eight or 12 hours and I absolutely loved it. I'd always have a smile on my face, seeing customers happy would fill me with energy and I thought to myself, you know what, I don't want to just be a desk based engineer, you know, creating designs. I want to work in a place where I have the customer in front of me and I'm using my technical knowledge to be able to provide a customer experience. I saw Heathrow Airport as the perfect place to be able to apply my technical engineering knowledge to provide the best customer service. Think about it. You're going on holiday, you're using our facilities, and it's my job to make sure that you have the best experience. And the way I do that is by making sure that all the engineering machinery, all the engineering bits and bobs behind the scenes all goes to plan and it all is working efficiently and that you have a smooth journey through our airport. So that was how I decided I wanted to be an engineer at Heathrow Airport and I have absolutely loved it ever since I've been here. It's been such an amazing experience and I've been able to see so many amazing things that I never thought I'd be able to see. I hope you've been able to find this video helpful and I hope it's been able to give you a little insight into what it's like being an engineer at Heathrow Airport. If you have any more questions about my role, about what it's like being an engineer, or just about Heathrow in general, just fill out the section on your worksheet and return it to your teacher, and I'll be more than happy to answer your question. Like I said, my name is Mohammed Tahir. I'm an aerospace engineer working at Heathrow Airport. Make sure you work hard in your studies, make sure you always chase your dreams. You can achieve whatever you want to achieve in this life, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise.